was running behind when I came out of the subway, racing home to scoop up my daughter and travel across town to a doctor's appointment. But a construction worker had commandeered the sidewalk with his survey equipment, forcing me to slow down and walk around him. Annoyed, I rhetorically asked him what he was doing. I got an impromptu engineering lesson back. He pointed to another crew member across the street holding a prism. The prism creates an unbroken line from the sidewalk to the new building. That's how we know it will be perfectly straight. Perfectly straight, that caught me off guard. I hoped it was a good sign. That afternoon, Julie and I were going to see an orthopedist about the curve in her spine. Julie's scoliosis resonated hard with me. When I was her age, I wore a hot, thick, plastic brace for two long years, all day, every day, to straighten out the curve of my curve. It was awful. It wouldn't be until well after those two years that I realized it wasn't that bad. But of all the curveballs life could throw my daughter, why did curvature of the spine have to be one of them? I told my nervous 13-year-old that she could handle this. I called her my fearless girl, like the statue in Lower Manhattan. Fearless girl stood defiantly, staring down Charging Bull. She could take on anything. Today, I needed to be fearless. I needed to walk into that appointment defiant, chest out, back kind of straight, hands placed squarely on my uneven hips, ready to take on scoliosis again this time for my daughter. But when we arrived, I melted. I was fearful. The waiting room was crowded. There were kids in wheelchairs, others with permanent braces on their legs. A nurse escorted us to the exam room and measured her height with a stadiometer, informing us that it took months for the engineers to install it. We had to make sure the floor was 100% level, so the scale would be perfectly straight. There were those words again. The doctor walked in, examined Julie's back, and gave us her expert thoughts. The curve is subtle. There's no likely need to do anything. Let's take an x-ray to make sure. We floated down the hall to imaging and then back again, my now weightless daughter gliding on my unencumbered back. A few minutes later, the doctor walked back in, swiveled the computer screen so we could see, and clicked, click. The shadowy x-ray appeared instantly and one thing was clear, that curve was not subtle. It looked like someone yanked a thick chain, hard. Oh, the doctor's voice dropped a few decibels, not what I thought. The room grew quiet, then a tsunami hit. The doctor wanted to brace her right away. Could we come back tomorrow for measurements and a fitting? I looked at my daughter, her blue eyes now rimmed in watery red. I found my fearless voice and informed the doctor that Julie was leaving for camp in a few days. Unless two months would make a difference, we would revisit this later when she got home from camp. We walked out in silence. It was my daughter who spoke up first. There were so many disabled kids in that waiting room, Mom, she whispered. Maybe a brace won't be so bad. She had gained a lifetime of perspective in one afternoon. My fearless girl was indeed my fearless girl. Whatever she faced, she could handle. You can do this, I assured her, wrapping my arms around her. We'll deal with this later, when you get home from camp. A small smile came across her face. My daughter's spine may have been curved, but I knew her head was on straight perfectly straight.